Monday's devotion for April 20, April 17, is found in the Upper Room Disciplines, written by Emma Joy Bushong. And our scripture reading is Luke 24, 13 to 27. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? And he asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. <laughs> and some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary for the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted that to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, the best conversations happen on walks. They create a special space that seems to transcend societal laws of vulnerability. Somehow the mix of fresh air, light exercise, induced endorphins, a lack of eye content, and movement toward a shared de destination allows us to share what's on our minds and take conversations to more intimate places. We see this happen between Jesus' followers when he joins them on their walk to Emmaus. Jesus approaches them while they're deep in conversation about everything that has just happened regarding Jesus' death. The author likes to imagine that they're using their walk to process the emotions and traumatic events that they've just endured, and that maybe in between the heavy, somber moments, they crack jokes and rehash the family drama going on back home. Jesus' followers were simply people, after all. Then a man, a stranger, emerge, engages them, and their walk has lowered their barriers. So without screening questions, a name, or any kind of second thought, they loop him into the story. And all of it, Jesus lets them tell the story he already knows, the story that he lived, because the followers needed to share it. Despite God's omniscience, they were invited to tell uh, our we are invited to tell our stories, to bring our experiences to God, to approach God with lowered walls and deep conversations and the desire to move forward. God engages us knowing that who we are and what we're going through because God wants to walk alongside us as we work through it. Christ may first appear like a stranger, but as we share and listen and travel, we will he will be revealed to us in, our, in the stories that we tell, in the memories that we have, and the moments that we experience. Let us pray. God, who meets us wherever we may be in our journeys, thank you for inviting us to share our stories with you. Forgive our imperfect retellings and bring clarity to the truths that we've experienced. Reveal yourself to us and guide us as we walk toward hope and healing 